In this video, we are going to talk about buying a 3D scanner and some of the advantages of buying a brand new scanner versus buying a used scanner. Now to get started, this video is not for any given 3D scanner. We have a great video called five things to look for in a 3D scanner. So if you're you know, trying to determine what the right scanner is, I would say take a look at that video because that's gonna go into some of the things you should look for. This video is just gonna compare buying a new one versus an old one. And you may already have a good idea of what you're looking for as far as a manufacturer and a model. And if you're not, you may wanna take a look at that other video and we'll put a uh, link in the description below. But what we're going to cover in this video is what are the reasons you would want to buy a brand new scanner? Why would you buy a U scanner? And if you're buying a U scanner, what, what, what do you want to look for? What do you want to look out for? Um, how would you validate it or do any testing? We'll also talk about some horror stories just to kind of let you know some of the things we've seen out there. And finally, we'll just do a quick summary of everything we've talked about. So why buy a brand new scanner? Well, a lot of people just like to buy things brand new. They want something that's never been used before, and they just like to buy new. Typically, they're going to want the latest technology in the hardware, the software, the firmware. Maybe there's some new features that have come out. Maybe the system is more accurate. Uh, but those are some of the, the key reasons you buy brand new. Also, typically, a brand new scanner is going to come with a one-year factory warranty and you're typically buying it either direct from the manufacturer or a dealer, a distributor, a reseller. And they're gonna offer you service, support, training, uh, maybe an ongoing uh, maintenance or warranty. Uh, because again, most manufacturers offer a one year warranty that covers parts and labor, but that is something you should look into. So next, let's talk about why buy a use scanner. Well, one of the most common reasons is to save money. Uh, you know, depending on the brand and how old it is, you know, you can save a decent amount of money. Now, we'll get into that a little bit more later, but, you know, it's definitely a way to save money. And some people don't need the latest technology. Uh, you know, there's some uh, scanners that are maybe a few years old or in a previous generation that will work just fine for them, and that's all they need. And they can get the hardware, the software, the firmware. Uh, many times with used ones, depending on where you buy them, which we'll talk about more, you can buy them with a warranty or add a warranty or a maintenance plan uh, to it. Sometimes people already own a, a given technology and they just want another one. Uh, and so they'll look for one used. They're familiar with the product. Maybe they don't need any training or support. Um, even though maybe it's an older model, it works just fine for them. And, you know, they may upgrade later. They may want to start by buying something used, kind of prove it out, make sure it is valuable to them, and maybe they'll upgrade it or trade it in on something newer. Now, also, sometimes you can get the latest scanners at a discount. Uh, a lot of dealers or manufacturers may have some demo models. So it may be the latest model, uh, but it's been used in demos uh, or other things, and they're selling it. So it's not to say you can't get the latest technology. And sometimes you can get it at a discount, okay? So what to look for? Well, you want to look for something in good condition. Um, and the problem is it's not always obvious. You see here in the picture here, um, it, you know, there's a lot of electronics and things in the, on the inside of these scanners. And if something is wrong with it, you just wouldn't see it. It's not going to be this obvious like this picture, okay? But you want to look for one that's in good condition, you want to try to get the history on it, you know, a known history. Um, another important thing is it always been under warranty. Um, many times uh, customers let their maintenance lap. They haven't had it calibrated or factory inspected in years. Um, so you got to be a little careful there. It's always good to try to buy one that, you know, is from the original owner. It's easier to trace the history to know how long they've had it, where they used it, what kind of conditions, what were they doing with it. Because again, problems can be hidden. You know, you could drop it uh, or break it or damage something on the inside or the electronics are fried and on the outside, it looks fine. So uh, just, you know, that's something you want to be careful with. 
Uh, it's always good to find out why are they selling it? You know, what is the reason they're selling it? And be careful of price. If it's really cheap, um, there could be something wrong with it. So obviously you want to save money by buying a used one. You want to pay a good or a fair price. But if it's a really low price or a really high price, um, you know, you really need to, to look into that. Uh, the other thing is, can you add a warranty or a maintenance, uh, maintenance plan to it? We'll talk more about this in a little bit, but you may want to check with the manufacturer or see if, if there is a current warranty on it, can that be transferred to the new owner? Because sometimes they cannot, so you'll want to look into that. Is there a warranty on it? Can it be transferred? And if there's not, can you uh, add it on? Because some manufacturers will not do that. And get everything in writing. Uh, get the sale in writing, the terms, the conditions, everything in writing. It's the best way to go anytime you're buying something used. And if they don't want to put anything in writing, um, then you know you really need to, to think about that. So here are some of the things to look out for. And we've run into many of these instances through the years. When you're buying it from someone, be careful who you're buying it with, specifically leasing companies or brokers. What happens is someone might lease a scanner for two, three, four, five years, and depending on the terms of their lease, they have to turn it back into the leasing company. Well, the problem with buying with them is they don't know the equipment. They usually don't even know how to turn it on. They have no way of testing it. Um, so you don't really know what you're buying. It's not their fault. It's just they're a leasing company um, or it gets sold uh, in a sale, uh, maybe the company went out of business and an equipment broker came in and bought everything. So, you know, if, if you're going to buy from somebody like that, you really need to be able to go and test the equipment. But a lot of times they, they don't. You also need to be careful with some of the older models. As these models get older, a lot of them are not supported anymore. The manufacturer doesn't support them. Um, they may be running on old versions of like Windows 7. Uh, there may be no parts, no warranty. I've seen people buy scanners and then call us up uh, and say, hey, I need to you know, get parts or something for it. And we tell them that it's no longer available. And you know, they basically bought a, a boat anchor. Also be careful, again, as I mentioned, multiple owners. If you don't know the history of it, you, you may want to be careful because you just don't know where it's been or who's had it. So if you can't trace the history back on it, I would be careful. Also, if they're not willing to do any kind of validation or test, I would be careful of that. Um, and when I mean test, I mean like a measurement test or scan a very specific part and send you the data, do a live web demo or make a video so you can see it working and get your hands on some data or do a measurement test of some, 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 some sort where you can see you know, that the accuracy is what it's supposed to be. Um, also be careful if they don't offer either a return policy or some kind of terms and conditions where if it doesn't work, they'll pay to get it fixed or uh, give you your money back or something like that. You want to look it over carefully. Again, you want to get all of this in writing. Do not buy it without you know some kind of uh, uh, written document that tells you what your rights are. You know, as I mentioned, validation and testing, do a benchmark. Ask them to scan something very specific. Um, you know, do some kind of artifact measurement, like you see here, a ball bar, so you can prove out the uh, the accuracy. Um, you know, look at their calibration report. If they if they've got a way to calibrate the system, and most of them do, ask them to send you that report so you can see what that looks like. The other thing you can do is ask them for the serial number, and then reach out to the manufacturer or the local dealer and distributor. And they many times can go and look that up and give you the history of the system. Um, oh, you know, for example, maybe it's been in re for repair numerous times, um, you know, or maybe it's always been under maintenance and, and always in good, uh, you know, working condition. And no matter who you buy it from, do research on who that person is or who that dealer is and, you know, make sure they're, they're good. If you're buying through eBay or, you know, what are the other marketplaces out there? Do some research. Look at their eBay rating. Um, do a web search on the company or a LinkedIn search on you know the the, the person or people um, you're buying. Be comfortable with who you're buying it from. So let's go through a few horror horror stories. Just to, you know, kind of give you some ideas of what's uh, what's going on out there and things you want to be careful of. Uh, we've had people call us up where they had bought a scanner from someone 
only to find out that scanner was stolen. Uh, it was stolen at a company and then sold. We actually had a pawn shop call us up once. Someone had, had brought a scanner in there, a very expensive scanner, and he was asking me about it because he looked us up on the web. And when I asked for the serial number, uh, the guy left. So he, he it obviously had to be stolen. But again, we've had people buy scanners that were stolen, and then they can't get service or support or software uh, because of that. So just be careful. Um, be careful of purchasing a scanner with no software. Again, a lot of these brokers and, and leasing companies, they may get the equipment back, but then there's no software for it. And, or there's a dongle that goes with it. Um, and some of the manufacturers um, want to charge so much to either put the software or bring it up to uh, spec or transfer the license. They make it so expensive that it's not worth it. So you may get a cheap scanner or get a great deal on a scanner only to find out you've got to pay $10,000 or $15,000 or $20,000 to get the software, to transfer the license or to get a dongle or you know a serial key or something like that. So look into that before you buy it. Find out um, what the um, any transfer fees or anything like that uh, might be. Um, also, we've had people buy scanners, like I said earlier, and they're no longer supported. They can't get parts, they can't get software, they can't get service. And again, they basically bought something they can't use. Um, also, many people that sell the scanner, if they're not a distributor or a dealer for that product, a lot of times they can't offer any training or support. And then they call us up and they want training. And, you know, we're happy to do it, but, you know, we're going to charge for it. And if it's on site, it's going to be more expensive. We're not going to do free training uh, for a product we didn't sell. We're happy to, to service and support you, but that's going to come at a cost. So, uh, be aware of that. We've also had people buy uh, products and never receive them. Um, so be very careful with certain private sellers or Craigslist or even Facebook. There's there's no uh, there's no recourse if if uh, you know basically you pay the money and they never ship the product. We we actually bought a 3D printer once, spent sixteen thousand dollars, bought it on eBay, and the they never shipped it. Um, we finally got our money back. We had to file a claim with eBay, but it took three or four months before we got our money back. So if you're going to buy on a, a website like eBay, you know, make sure you understand what those terms and conditions are. So just in summary, you know, new versus used, you know, new, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're getting the latest and greatest. You're getting a warranty, but buying used is still a good deal. You can save, you know, depending on what you're buying, you can you can save a decent amount of money. But again, be careful. Uh, you know, I would suggest buying from a dealer, a reseller, or a manufacturer directly. You're probably going to pay a little more than a third party or an independent. But you know, you know what you're getting, especially uh, you know service support things like that. Um, if you do buy, you know, uh, from a private party, just, you know, buy from somebody you know or somebody you trust or somebody you've got a reference or referral from. Um, and if you do buy with somebody like that, I would use, there's escrow services out there where you can basically put the money in escrow until you receive it and inspect the product. Um, and then they release the money. They take a small fee. But if you want peace of mind, I would suggest using a service. And if they don't want to use a service like that, Maybe you split the cost with them, then, you know, I wouldn't buy it. Um, and again, the websites, usually the better websites are going to have some buyer protection. Definitely benchmark and test the equipment. Know what you're buying. Make sure it works. And again, understand the terms and conditions. So that wraps up this video. Just a quick video on buying new versus used. What's out there. If you have any questions about... Uh, new or used equipment. Um, we certainly buy and sell used equipment. Um, it can be a great way to go for a lot of people, but happy to give you any advice or if you found something and you want our advice on it or, hey, is this a good price or should I buy that? Certainly give us a call at 877-845-2700 or you can email us at info at ems3d.com.